Welcome to First and Goal, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Get ready for the latest and hottest topics in the SML. Let's get started. Here's your host, Mad Bomber. All right, welcome to this week's episode of First and Goal. This week we've got prime time zero zero zero. There we go. We'll wait for it. And there it is. Uh, we've got Coop, and he looks like he's got a brand new microphone he's holding there. Uh, we've got Demuse, and we've got on three hours sleep, it's Faz. How's everybody doing tonight? Great, great, great. Good. How about yourself? Good. All looks right. Like Coop's about to spit a, spit a freestyle with that mic. I don't know what's going on. It does. I, I expect at the end when he wins to do something with it, but we'll see. It sounds if, great. If, it's, it's not rigged, right? It's not rigged. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely not rigged. Uh, topic number one. So there's five teams out there right now with over $45 million in unspent salary cap. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, and, and one of those teams is actually over $100 million. And we'll start with you, Coop. Yeah, so I think there's a few different reasons that that can happen. Um, one of those is uh, now that we've kind of gone on, and our last offseason was actually over the weekend, so that first round of free agency is uh, pretty important. If you miss that, um, there's not a lot left in the last round. Um, so this last off season was about eight hours, I think, for that uh, advance. Um, but you've got, it seems like five's a lot to be over, to be, to be over like 50 million in cap space almost. Um, 250s are max, which is way beyond the NFL right now. Um, you also have, um, the way our advances work, um, you can kind of log in five minutes and just snipe who you want. If you have some space, <laughs> I know, uh, we've seen that a couple times, but, um, yeah, I, I don't have an answer for why, um, Latin with the jets has over a hundred million in space. Um, that's, that's just crazy. <laughs> I mean, there has to be someone on there that maybe he could plug into defense or whatever he's struggling with to help him out. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I think it's kind of like the off seasons. If maybe you're working during that first free agency period. And then um, if you can't log in to check your bets, those last five minutes, um, that's kind of why I think that happens. But there's a couple teams on there. I know that we're um, in the free agency period and before we advance and they still didn't spend it. So I can't help you with them. Yeah, in Latin's defense, uh, I was I played him the first week after the draft, and he didn't even know what day it was. So uh, <laughs> he was he was a little confused during that whole off season, I think. But uh, Demius, we'll go to you. Who did you say? Did you say me? Yep. Sorry. Yep. We went to you. Oh, <laughs> perfect. All right. Well, while we're on the topic of salary cap, quick shout out to Drew Brees. You're tired today. Just want to get that out of the way. Favorite athlete of all time. Um, salute, Drew. But I think a lot of it comes down to you see a lot in these Madden leagues and every cycle, like guys get thrown away when they turn 28 or when they touch their second contracts, no one wants to pay anyone. And sometimes this excess of cap space sort of stems off of that. If you're not paying anyone ever and you're just going young, young, young all the time, you'll see teams with open cap space. And I think another factor is potential. I think a lot of people see cap space as, sort of an asset like probably a greater asset than it even is if you're not willing to like actually spend it on like an impactful veteran or make an aggressive trade or two it's not really bringing in anything so even if it's like available to you if you're not willing to strike and spend it that potential just goes wasted but i think a lot of times guys get caught up with oh i have the ability to trade for someone if they become available or if there's a marquee free agent next year i can sign them and then they just don't end up making that move or for whatever reason they get outbid in the end um so I think a lot of it also has to do with that. A lot of guys go in with mindset of, oh, well, this has the potential to be this great, and it just never really comes to fruition. But it's definitely strange and not the best strategy, in my opinion, if you're trying to put out a competitive product on the field. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Faz, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a mixture of a couple of things. Uh, I do have to agree with Coop. Um, you know, if you, if you miss that first section of the offseason, the, the second wave of free agents is just, not worth paying or they're not going to command a high salary. Um, so if you miss those first guys, 
um, or you don't get on in time to, to scoop Travis Kelsey or Michael Thomas, um, you're not going to be shelling out that kind of money. Um, I think another part of it is we're reaching the point where a lot of the bad contracts given out in the NFL, um, you can cut and, and get savings from. Uh, I know like with my team, I had a lot of high price guys, um, but, you know, pretty much all of them, if, you know, they didn't retire by now, um, you know, I could get rid of pretty easily. You can get cap space from it. Um, and they're, they're just not worthwhile players to have. So you're getting to the point where people aren't worried about cutting those guys. Um, you can dump them. And, and then again, you know, the rookies do play a part, you know, it's Madden, uh, regression hits quick. Um, regression hits pretty hard. So if, if you don't have superstars, X factors, those guys are going down fast and you're, you're just dumping them and filling them in with, with rookies, uh, and guys that you can find off the practice squad, you know, random guys have developed here and there. So definitely a combination of a couple things, but at the end of the day, Madden makes it pretty easy to manage a salary cap. All right. Prime, what do you think? Yeah, first, uh, Drew Brees don't like the guy. The stupid picture of him and his baby was when they beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. Can't stand him or his baby. You're damn right. Uh, that was my background on my computer for about four years. So. Yeah, well, I don't like his baby. Um, so, <laughs> second, second of all, um, yeah, I didn't realize that Latin Yank had $100 million in cap space until, until like five minutes ago. So, you have to try pretty hard to to have $100 million in cap space. I mean, he should have his own radio show like Dave Ramsey. Latin Ramsey is his new nickname, I think. Uh, but but all in all, I think a good number to have is around 15 to 20. That gives you, going into the season, that gives you some space to make a trade, make a signing. You know, some, sometimes those free agents ask 5 to $6 million. But over fifty is just just dumb, just dumb, stupid, stupid, stupid. You gotta you gotta at least sign somebody to a short term deal, not a one year thirty million dollar contract, but one year fifteen million. Try to get somebody in, somebody who can help your team out, and it won't hurt you long term. Spend that money. You're just you're just wasting it. And don't complain about your team if you have that much cap space. I don't know who it is. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna call them out because now I gotta find out who these five teams are. And if they ever complain about their teams, because if they do, then I'm sorry. Uh, no it's, sympathy for you at all. It's funny that you mentioned that. I'll give you one uh, guess who one of them could be that complains about their team all the Polly, time. Please. Is it? Is it? It's not Matt, is it? It is 100% Matt. Oh, oh no! Oh, God, I believe he's no. got. I think he's one of the 40 ones. I could be wrong. He might only have 20 something oh. million, but he does have a, a very high uh, amount. I'm just not. I, I cut that. the number at forty. There was there was still quite a few guys with twenty plus million sitting there yeah, unused. I think fifteen's a solid number. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm at like ten or twelve. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I I keep mine right around like four or five. If a if a okay. top free agent falls, then I have enough to sign them. But other than that, mm-hmm. like you said, you're wasting the money. You can sign guys to one year deals so that the the money's freed up the next season. I don't know yeah. why you sit on it, but Sweet. all right. So topic two. Topic two, and this was kind of touched on on uh, total access. You guys, you guys talked about stats, but uh, do the stats even really matter? And do you even pay attention to them? And uh, we'll start with you, D Muse, this time. I don't tend to. Um, oftentimes, in my Madden experience, I I'm not one to really win the end of the season awards. They're not really my goal to start the season. I just kind of play each game and do what I can to win each individual game. Um, I do like to look have my stats but i'm kind of weird when i look at them I, I focus more on like am i throwing interceptions um or how many sacks how many tackles for loss is like my d lineman getting i'm not looking for like robust yardage numbers as long as i'm playing to win that's all that matters to me i know a lot of guys focus on stats and that's their right especially if you're successful and you're getting those all those upgrades because that is the best way to get your players better in the long haul but overall stats don't matter to me as much as just playing good smart football and trying to win when i play each game all right faz what do you think yeah i'm, I'm the same i don't look at stats at all um pretty much none of them uh, especially like team stats i couldn't tell you where i am for any of them nothing um the only time i look at any kind of stats is when it comes to like player developments um upgrades dev games if it's a dev game you'll see me checking the stats you know mid game um but as far as like dev upgrades, um, like if, I, I can't do it now because I have Cook. But if I had a rookie running back, I, I'd be checking those stats, making sure, you know, I'm, I'm getting him into a situation where he's going to boost at the end of the year. Um, sometimes it hurts you. I did it with uh, with Spencer Norton, I think season two, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was real excited to try and get him up. I was ready to throw the ball, huck it and chuck it. And then I lost to to Rowan. And I think it was Matt, like immediately back to back. I was like, nah, forget it. <laughs> Scratch it. If I get it, I get it. If not, I don't. But uh, that, that's the only time just would be would be Devin players. All right. Prime, what do you think? And, uh, just just to add, you, you said you lost to Rowan. Is that right? Yeah, sure did. Yeah, yep. yeah doing that will make you reevaluate your entire Madden career. So <laughs> I don't blame you uh, there. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I check a little bit of stats. I'm not Meats. You know, Meats is a stat guy, um, but he doesn't win Super Bowls. Uh, obviously I don't either right now, but, uh, hey. uh but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I check the stats I enjoyed. I mentioned this on total access is I kind of like to see how I'm doing in the red zone, how I'm doing on third downs. And I noticed a correlation of my completion percentage and losses. Like if my completion percentage is a little bit lower than usual, uh, I feel like maybe I'm, uh, I'm, tr- I'm pushing the ball too far down the field. And that's probably a reason why I'm lost. Obviously turnovers are, are you know, pretty everybody checks that probably but uh you know just just some weird little stats i enjoy and if i'm trying to dev a player i'll make sure he's in the top five and the categories mm-hmm. he needs to be uh, i'm sure dan right now with his his quarterback he's probably he's got that chart and i think he's actually number one in both categories and yeah. and that's what you have to do to dev a player because that's the way madden has a program nothing wrong with it that's just that's just how madden is yep all right coop and what are your thoughts finally on this one yeah i'm uh I'm kind of on the boat with some of them. Um, I don't really game stats after a game. I might not even look unless I'm just, you know, trying to find something to post on Twitter for a game recap. Um, I don't really care about them a lot. I will click on like daddy leagues will show you like where you rank um, offensively and defensively. So I will um, every few weeks, I'll just click on my team and where am I ranked? Usually I'm in the bottom on offense. So that's never a surprise. And, uh, and I usually try to look at my uh, quarterback touchdown interception <laughs> ratio. Um, that's something that I try not to turn the ball over a lot. Um, this year I'm fumbling the ball a lot. So that, that ratio is not real great as a team as a whole, but um, yeah, I don't, um, I don't pay attention to a lot of stuff. Um, I've actually devved up some guys in the off season on defense and I couldn't even tell you how that happened. So yeah, nice. that's kind of where I am. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, and this this will kind of lead into the next topic. But, um, you know, everybody asked the question of, do the stats matter? And everybody kind of took it as, uh, do their own stats matter? Uh, one of the things I do before I'll play somebody is I'll look at their stats. Um, like, for example, if I look at Colt right now, I can guarantee you his top two pass receivers are Kamara and Hayden Hurst. So that tells me. Not Michael Thomas? Yeah, no, I don't think he ever had Michael Thomas as a top receiver somehow. <laughs> Th- Thomas is having a down season yeah. for the Saints this year. Thomas you know? is garbage. He doesn't catch anything when I don't throw to him. Yeah, um, yeah 99 overall, but uh, yeah. I, I can't make it work with him. But but that's that's one of the way I use stats is I'll look to see who your go-to guy is, and that's the guy I want to take away whenever I play you. Um, so that kind of leads that's us into topic question. three. Topic three is do you have different game plans for people, or do you just – Go out there and play your game. And Faz, we'll start with you this time. Um, I will I will tweak a game plan. As a whole, I know what I'm good at. I know what I like to do. I know what I'm comfortable in. And I, I prefer to do that. Um, and I'm not going to deviate from that too much. But then playing certain people, you know, you know that you have to tweak. You have to prepare for different things. Uh, you know, I, I got DMUs on here. You know you got to prepare for, uh, for McCaffrey. Um, if you don't, he's going to torture you. He's going to shred you. There's nothing you're going to do about it. Um, if you play Matt or dump, you know, you've got to be, be ready to sell out, to stop the run. If you play meets, uh, contain spies, you know, Kyler's going to move after the first read. Um, so you, you have to, you have to tweak, um, you have to be ready to, to be flexible in your game, but I don't go into games against certain people with like specific, like I have to do this if I want to win, um, as a whole, I'm still kind of letting it fly for that. All right. Prime. How about you? Yeah, I, I'm. Everybody pretty much knows what I like to do. Uh, I, I don't mix it up too much. Um, now, if you're gonna force me to, like Bombers, kind of force me to mix it up a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, but him aside, example being like uh, Sunday when he was in the league, I knew okay, these pass rushers are retarded, so I'm gonna have to get this ball out quick. Uh, if, if I'm playing somebody like Meats, you know, like he said, contain a little more than I would normally would. Put a spy in when I usually don't put in a quarterback spy. 
Uh, I like just taking away the guy's best player. So, so I do check stats before a game. I, I don't scout or anything, so I'll check, okay, if this guy's got 60 passes to his tight end, then I, I'm going to watch that seam up mm-hmm. the middle against my, my cover two and maybe maybe get a pick on him. Um, stuff like that. Uh, but, but I won't necessarily always change up my game plan. If I'm playing NYT, quarterback spy every play. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm not building a game plan for every game. All right, cool. Yeah, I I kind of do a little bit of what you do, bomber. Um, and I try to watch games when I can if I'm free and you know they're on. So after I've seen a guy play once or twice, um, I'm not gonna look at their stats probably at all unless I it's been a while and maybe they drafted some guys I don't know about. But um, yeah, I offensively I'm down to coach suggestions um i added some of my own plays to rotate in so it was a little a little more plays to choose from um defensively i kind of just try to play against um kind of their go-to guys if i can um but yeah offensively if i haven't played them and i'll look at their stats i might actually look at them look at their defensive uh front and see if they have a weak spot and then maybe i'll I don't ever do it, but I try to run with Henry a little bit more. <laughs> I'm pretty much 50-50 every game passing and running. But, um, yeah, I guess uh, – and then uh, if I'm really bad, I'll throw my own stats out into the chat. Um, I was like one for ten passing with negative four yards, so that was a fun one. Yeah. All right. Uh, McCaffrey to the flats. I mean, d it's yours. Uh, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I would say going into a game – I kind of go with the same mentality each time. I know I've been using my same playbook for a few Maddens now with a few changes in between just to switch things up. But, like, I know where my guys are going to be. I know what plays I want in each situation that I'm in. Um, so I go in with the same mindset. Now, in terms of, like, mid-game adjustments, there are obviously games that everyone has that what you're doing is not working. You're going to have to switch it up. So there is when I make most of my adjustments is if I'm seeing something in particular on the defensive side from the other team or offensively if I'm getting killed. I do check stats, so that's actually an interesting way that you interpreted that last question, Bomber. I didn't even think about that when I read it and thought about it. Um, I definitely do check stats, especially for big games. Maybe not like week not maybe not like a week five game, but as it gets closer to the playoffs or if it's an important divisional showdown, um, it's definitely something that I look at and study a bit beforehand. But for the most part, the only time I'd ever change my mindset going into a game is if I've played the guy a lot, which I haven't really anyone in this league. Um, but a lot of the times like throughout Madden cycles and in Madden leagues, that's like your division opponents or mm-hmm. guys you've been in the league with for multiple years. Like those kind of players, you can't just run the same thing against them over and over again, or else they're going to know what's coming from you. So I think in those instances, you do have to go in with a different game plan, a different mindset, but in general, um, no, not really. It's more in game for me. All right. So that's going to uh, move us to topic four. Topic four, I'll start with, uh, we'll start with Prime this time. Why is there no NFC rivalries? I know, I know Meats and Dump, or Dump really, not even Meats. Dump says it's the best rivalry in the SML, but nobody even knew what time the game was coming on. Um, why do you oh, think there's uh, no sorry. rivalries in the NFC? Sorry, I was playing with my, my ear piercing here. Uh, um, oh, oh, wait, that's why. The NFC is too busy. Putting pl- piercing their ears and putting on makeup and shaving their legs instead of playing their games uh, well, you know that that's why they're just they're just boring. They're they're trying to be cute, they're trying to be pretty, and then they fall flat on their faces every time. The personality Rowan Cub, the only time he shows up is when he's winning. Then he gets smacked around. He disappears like Casper the Friendly Ghost. I mean, the, the deal is the AFC has got the big dogs. You got Prime, myself, you got Bomber, you got Dan, even you got Coach Pauly. Um, NFC doesn't have that personality. They're boring. They, they say they're going to play, and then they push it back. They say they're going to play, and then they move it up. It's it's just – it's all sideways. It's just all sideways. We even say they're gonna, we're going to commentate their game, and then they get all giddy. They're like little 12-year-old girls, and, and then they play it at freaking 10 in the morning. I just hate it. I hate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> NFC just doesn't know how to hype. They're not showmen. All right, Coop, as the other uh, AFC representative on this panel, we'll go ahead and go to you next. Yeah, I think it's uh... – it's just kind of what's going on with the guys that are um, at the top of the NFC right now. Um, you know, one of the NFC guys was the person everyone loved to hate. Um, he's he's gone. Um, you've got QP, 
you've got D Muse that's here and Faz. Um, a lot of those are nice guys that don't talk trash in the chat, I guess. So I guess the guy that probably talks the most trash would be Dump. Um, he's kind of got a rivalry with Meats, but Meats is, I don't know what he's doing right now. He's got too many packages to deliver. <laughs> so, you know, just hooked up the PS5. So maybe he starts playing some other game. He doesn't even care about winning yeah. against Dump anymore. But yeah, I think it's just a bunch of the guys at the top. Um, there's not a lot of trash talkers there. Um, Grams is getting old. He's going to be up there. But um, yeah, I think that's F, F in the chat for Grams just gets. Uh, well, house. also, <laughs> when you win three games, it's really tough to talk trash. I mean, yeah. it doesn't stop I, some people in the NFC, but I won't name. I names. do want to highlight Dump. Uh, he talks trash to Meats, but Meats just he like keels over now like a freaking yeah. dead possum. I feel bad. I, they they make me feel bad for them now. I feel somebody, even bad somebody for... took that boy's soul. Holy! I just jeez. <laughs> I mean, uh, we need to keep a welfare check on that boy every thirty minutes. I don't know what's going on. All right, Faz, we'll go to you next. All right, that so here we there's a there's a couple of reasons for the the lack of rivalries in the NFC. I'll get the obvious one out of the way quickly. It's that if you look at most of the consistent playoff teams in the NFC, we're all new. <laughs> like, you've got me, you've got RD, you've got D Muse, um, QP. You know, that's four guys right off the bat in a 17 playoff picture who all joined this cycle. Um, we haven't had time to build rivalries because most of the time when we play each other, it's for the first time. Um, me and Bomber built one in three days. Yeah. Uh in three That's days, really well, I don't know. You, could, you couldn't you beat him for a few months, so Shut <laughs> it up, didn't fast. seem like Shut much up, of fast. a rivalry. Take that back, fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that you've started to, you know, show show some resistance, maybe. But, uh, you know, for a little bit there, there wasn't much of a rivalry. Yeah, I, um, I was meat. I was meat for a while. There. See, I, 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 I'm going to have to take yeah. a point there because I disagree. I think there was still a rivalry there. I mean, you still knew when the Colts-Jags game was. Yeah, there was more trash talk then than there is than, yeah. than there is now, almost. Anyway. More trash talk then, but now now we've got Wizards, Jordan. Oh, I'm so washed up. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> we're just I trying mean, to find the fountain of youth. You know, if, if you want to talk about we're not showmen, I mean, shoot. At least Rowan will talk. I'll talk a little bit. Um, you know, at least we're not over here folding outside of meats. I mean, that's kind of his deal. But, you know, what are you going to do? You got to have one, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I, I do think a lot of that, you know, we, we've had to deal with a lot of slander, some reckless talk from this AFC um, as Prime puts in a second order for more chocolate milk, probably. Um, I've got something. You don't worry. <laughs> you got something. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we, we've had to deal with a lot of reckless talk. Um, so I, I think for a little bit, it was more we had to had to build ourselves up. And that kind of meant like uniting a little bit, had to make the Thanos deal. Um, so, you know, had to, had to kind of hype each other up for a little bit. And, and as we start to get some recognition and we, we keep winning these Super Bowls, now it's uh, now we can kind of focus on beating each other up soon. So I, I know it's been a couple of years, so I probably don't have to say spoiler alert, but you realize Thanos loses in the end, right? Yes. You did he see the, the second movie. That's all that matters. I think it's, I think it's, it's cute. We got the out SM time travel, figure it out. <laughs> we got the SML Care Bear coming in and, and talking some trash now, sticking up for the NFC. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. That's good. I, I appreciate that. I mean, look, somebody's got to, somebody's got to take the mantle. So I'll do a better job than Dookie because I'll walk out of here without everybody hating me. But, <laughs> but somebody's got to do something for this. All right, Demius, last chance to save the NFC. I mean, I'm going to steal Faz's point as my first point here, and it's just that, I mean, I'm new. I'm not going to talk trash until I accomplish something I haven't yet. So it's kind of hard to talk smack to anyone. I mean, especially like I know Faz made the Super Bowl. I've, RD just won the Super Bowl. Um, I haven't reached that point yet, so it's kind of hard for me to talk trash on them. I know QP's newer. This is only his third like individual season in, inside of the SML, not, not even just joining the cycle. Um, and that's a lot of the guys that you see winning NFC games or being in big NFC games. So it's kind of hard to talk trash when you haven't accomplished what you want to accomplish or what you need to accomplish to be able to talk trash. And then you kind of need to build that rapport and have someone who can like challenge you consistently as Faz said, if you haven't played anyone or um, you play them once every other season or so, um, you're not going to have that relationship to talk trash. But I actually do think there is a rivalry in the NFC. Or Clank against the NFC themselves? does have a rivalry. No, Whoa. I think 
the NFC's rival is the AFC. Um, I think the <laughs> NFC started clapping back a little bit. I think the AFC garners all this attention. They're like a flower doing photosynthesis. I don't know. They need what? they need constant <laughs> sunlight, constant attention. <laughs> And they, um, I, I had know. a chair I, I could spin in, I'd be spinning. I think, I think That's all like the NFC wants to do some point deduction, make the that... AFC shut up. <laughs> so I think, I think that's the rivalry. I think they're standing up for themselves as opposed to, um, self imploding within. Yes, Prime, you have your hand up. I just, yeah. I, why is the NFC boring? And he gave uh, photosynthesis as a reason. I, I mean, come on. Why do, do we even need to have a conversation now? This is why the Core NFC Phil, is boring. better than the NFC. <laughs> here's here's, yeah. hey, here's, Mito, here's Prime Mito, taking in those rays of sunlight. Mitochondria is a powerhouse of a cell. That's why the NFC is better. Jeez. That's still a better answer than when Meats pulled up his stats page. Oh, that was bad. That, that was yeah, bad. that didn't help. Or, uh, yeah, we're, when we talked about the good. NFC be, being boring and, and figs, did his best Ben Stein impersonation yeah. to answer it. Yeah, that's uh, true. But uh, I, I will say you you have uh, actually gotten a little bit of a head start on that trash talk because the two of you basically said that the entire NFC outside of the new guys is garbage, trash. and that's yeah. why. So mm-hmm. Wait, who said that? You both <laughs> did. You said the whole reason that there's no uh, trash I talk is because I the rest of the NFC other than the new guys can't win anything. of... The, the playoff teams are in a majority. I did not say anything about it. And this is why there's no point. rivalries in the NFC because you're already backtracking it. Baz, yeah, the AFC, no, the AFC you gotta, South. You got to own it. There's no, we're on, this, no. Is, this is recorded, you know. I could own it if, if the <laughs> AFC South in here was struggling against the NFC teams in the show currently. Well, now, Bomber's pretty new himself. This is pretty much yeah. his first real cycle. So there's just something to consider. Something to consider, yeah. That's fair. I mean, it's fine. You guys just called the rest of the NFC garbage, so yes, yes. We'll, we'll see how they feel about that. Yes, yes. I don't that, say anything. That's gonna do it. it for I mean, our if show. only we could all play against KJ. <laughs> oh, why KJ? Why KJ? Because he's won like two games him. since I joined. <laughs> well, if Hova was playing in the AFC, that's all he'd win. Hey, Hova's starting to ball now. Don't you sleep? Because uh, he plays in the NFC. Hova. He's spinning in that chair. He's gonna win. The AFC has you three winless spinning. teams. That's because yeah, they play the in the AFC stacked over AFC. Here losing games with the Chiefs every single season. What in the yeah, world? We don't own Ra- Raiders like an NFC team, pretty much. We don't care about them. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't accept them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you can keep them. We don't want them over here. Shoot. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Right back to you. Uh, we've got Demuse with 36, Faz with 36. Shocking. The NFC can't pull it out again. Prime with 39. <laughs> this is and rigged. Unbelievably, Coop wins rigged. with 41 points. Coop, these 30 seconds are all yours. Wow. He hasn't even I, talked for the last half an hour. Yeah, to win. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically this means that the NFC is boring um, and the AFC yes. wins, even on the show. Um, oh. No, nah, <laughs> I've got like three wins this season. I'm not going to go there. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it's been a good cycle so far. Um, maybe um, I got a shout out to Alex here and uh, spend some of that $111 million you have free. And uh, mm-hmm. maybe you'll win more games. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go out on that. All right. Well, thanks for being on, Bomber guys. Just, Rest Bomber of the NFC, really you heard it here. Demuse and Faz, man. think you suck. Um, and that's why <laughs> you're making the NFC boring. So mm-hmm. feel free to take that up with them. Uh, thanks again, guys, for being on. And until next week, this has been First and Goal. Thanks for listening to First and Goal. Be sure to check out Mad Bomber TV on Twitch and YouTube for the latest from the SML. And we'll see you next time on First and Goal.